Hey everybody, and we're back here on Inside the Ropes, and I'm very pleased to very pleased to be joined by a former WCW superstar, former WWE superstar, and with 20 years since the invasion, it's only right that we talk to Mr. Chuck Palumbo. Chuck, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It does not look like it's been 20 years for you. I need to get your your secrets, your skincare <laughs> regime that you must <laughs> oh, go Thank you very much. I don't know, man. Maybe genetics. I got to thank my mom and dad for that. There you go. Hey, yeah. But... 50. I'm going to be 50 in two weeks or less. So my birthday is June 15th. So what do I got? 10, 11 days left? Yeah. Yeah. Well, 50. When is that? If I look at you at 49, I'm doing something right, Chuck. Um, but listen, I want to ask you about, uh, you know, loads of people talk about WCW, the dying days, the invasion, all that stuff. So the first thing I wanted to ask you about was early 2001, you guys think that Eric Bischoff is going to buy WCW. That's He yeah. does a press release and it's all happening. I mean, did you guys kind of feel like when Bischoff gets WCW, you know, maybe it'll be better for you guys? What was the internal feeling for you guys in the locker room at that point? Okay, so when you refer to you guys, I'm assuming you're referring to the young group of guys I was hanging out with, right? Yes. The Dash One Thriller guys? Yeah. yeah. So we were excited. We didn't know for sure it was going to happen. We were hearing a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but we wanted to believe that. And we knew Eric was a great mind. I, I, I knew Eric was a great mind for the business. Mm -hmm. um, I knew he wanted to develop younger guys. Um, I thought Eric got it. So I thought, geez, if this, if this guy gets it, it's going to be great for us. And, you know, looking back at it, if he had, if it had went through and he had acquired it, mm -hmm. the wrestling world would be different today. Yeah, very really different. WC, he, I, I know he could have really done wonders. And so, you know, then we fast forward to March. You know, you guys think it's all going through. He thinks it's going through. Then TNT pulled the, the TV slots. So within the space of a couple of days, the deal's not happening anymore. And then Vince McMahon buys WCW. So, I mean, I know that we'll talk about the last Nitro in a second, but Vince bought WCW on the Friday. You and Sean O'Hare are the tag team champions. I mean, I know it's been 20 years, but do you remember how you found out that Vince had got it? How did that change your kind of state of mind? Did you feel good about it? Did you feel bad about it? What do you remember your initial reaction being? Yeah. Um, at first, I didn't know what to think. Um, you know, I'll go back to the uh, Panama City, the father, you know, the last Monday Nitro. Mm -hmm. And just the, the, the aura and, the, and the, the cloud that was over that show, uh, you have, you know, Shane McMahon coming into the locker room. You have one of the Briscoe brothers um, in the gorilla position. And not, no one's telling you much. Shane, give us a little bit of a heads up, but not much. That's when you knew it was happening. Before that, you just never really knew. Was it going to happen? Was, mm -hmm. you know, or was it just going to fold? Is Vince going to buy it? What's going to happen? Um, so, yeah, there's an uneasy feeling. Um, you, you know, you got to think about it. Were we going to have jobs? Were we going to get an opportunity in WWF? Were we going to go over there and sit on the bench? You take away one company, but you still have the same amount of talent. It's less TV time. So all these things are running through your head. We were hungry and young. A dollars and cents standpoint. No, that was never in our mind. It was more about us continuing to develop on TV. So um, we kept our fingers crossed. I heard that uh, I was told I was going to go over there right away. I was pretty excited about that. Um, and yeah, you know, we, we were still, it was tough because we were just dying to get a push. Mm -hmm. you had you know eric and you had um oh gosh I'm losing my mind right now but the uh, gentleman from uh vince russo Vince Russo, yeah. big fans of what we were doing giving us the push um so it was tough because here we are just starting to get some momentum and then there goes the company mm -hmm. very hard to take that momentum bring it over to the wwf and continue on as you witnessed as we yeah. all witnessed so yeah. I mean, I guess from your point of view, when you when you're there at that last nitro, you know, you said you guys weren't getting told much, but you know, Shane kind of gave you a little bit of a heads up. I mean, it must have been there must have at least been part of you that says, Well, they're keeping the tag belts on us, so that must be a good sign, right? Like you know, some that was probably the extent of it because you know, in the wrestling business, every week changes. You could be here tomorrow, there the next week, right? Mm -hmm. That 
what happens backstage that night before the show. It's always up in the air. Oh, am I working? Am I not working? Uh, are we doing this angle? Are we not? Am I going over? Am I putting someone over? Mm-hmm. That's always up in the air. So, yeah, to answer that question, yes. The fact that they kept the belts on us was a, was a, was a positive thing, was a, you know, was a plus. And, um, yeah, happy, and then- happy that it worked out that way. <laughs> and then you know, six days later, you guys are at WrestleMania 17. Shane kind of you know uh, motions to you guys in the box. Um, how did you know what what did, what was the experience like of being at WrestleMania 17? Was it a welcoming experience? Did was did you get good vibes coming out of that weekend? What do you remember about it? Now, was that the time when we were sitting up in the box and that was yeah. really it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, on one hand, it was super exciting. To be part of that felt like hey they're going to use us they're going to do something with us on the other hand there was such a disconnect between the wcw talents and the wwf talents there was like you know there was egos involved and the fact that they didn't really want us there sort of and you know, hey these guys are going to take our you know think about it it's going to be tough for the wwf talent when they see guys coming in they're thinking we're going to grab those spots right we're going after those spots so there's some you know there, there's some tension there mm-hmm. Now, looking back, if we had bonded, I tell these people, that I tell everybody this, if we had bonded and got along, because the, the business was about to go, you know, into a monopoly, basically, right? So mm-hmm. we should have stuck together. They, you know, if they were more welcoming, I think we could have been more successful. Um, but it was a real, real, it was a real time to be in the business because these things are really happening. The buyout was real. The fact that WCW Talent was coming over to a new home was real as mo you know as, as real as it had been in a long time and i mean the, the i mean people not a lot of people remember this but initially when wc when they bought wcw the plan was for wcw to have its own tv show there'd be a wcw show wbf show and it just you know for various reasons they couldn't get some of the kind of more established names so it ended up becoming the invasion storyline do you feel yeah. like that was better for you as a younger talent who was more on the cusp of things for it to be more of an invasion? Or do you think if there had been, you know, a WCW show on its own, that that would have worked out better for you? That's very, you know, that's a, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, at the time, the young guys were getting a push in WCW. Mm-hmm. So maybe it would have been nice to continue with the WCW. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, in wrestling, day to day you never know what's going to happen you know um yeah they brought us over to wwf and they used us a bit but did they use us in the capacity that they could have i don't believe so so I, i'm not sure because you just never in wrestling it's tough i i one or two people's opinion of you can dictate your career right yeah and you, and you got to be able to navigate through the business i'm not talking about inside the ring i'm talking about the, the biggest part of the business is outside the ring. You have to be able to navigate through that. And that takes years to learn that. I was still learning that at the time. A lot of the people around me, the, the power plant guys, the, the natural born thriller guys, great guys, they were learning that too. So I'm not sure. That's hard to answer. Uh, you know, the, there was kind of stories that the, the famous Booker T Buff Bagwell match on Raw was the, the catalyst to not doing the WCW show. Do you remember that match? Do you remember being backstage for that? Was there... Was there an atmosphere when that match didn't go down the way they had hoped it would? I was there. Uh, I watched the match. Do I remember the match? No. Um, I mean, let's think about it. Was the match really that bad? All in all. No. Right? Okay. So was it really about that match? Or was it more about maybe some political issues with certain talents behind the scenes? All right, Bagwell, uh, I don't use wrestling terms often, but I'll use it here. At the time, he had some what we call heat, right? Um, some for Certain people didn't like him. He was known to be, you know, a little over the top backstage and stuff like that. Was there a little, maybe a little heat? Yeah. Was it maybe that there was an issue with some of the uh, established WWF talent that was already there? Did he get buried to a point? You know, you gotta think about it because you know if you think about it, at the end of the day, was the match that bad? And if it was, was that the right way to go about it? 
can we pick up? This is wrestling. We can make it whatever we want, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, there was stories, and I don't, I, I don't get into these stories too often, but I did hear rumblings of, you know, he had heat because, you know, his mom was somehow involved backstage, you know, uh, with some personal things, and, you know, who cares how he was as, you know, Bagwell, you know, we're not close or anything like that, but we always got along. I know he's, I know he's having some struggles now. He's trying to deal with some stuff. I get that. It's unfortunate. I hope he works through that. But as a person, don't worry about who he is. The guy was over in WCW. He was over. Say what you want to say about him. He drew money. So mm-hmm. they could have done that in WWF. I think politics became an issue. That's what I think it came down to. Um, and for you, for you personally, you know, you guys were working with the APA, then you're working with Undertaker and Kane. You know, there, there's a lot of kind of rumors that um, they might not have been the most welcoming people to you at that point in time. What What's the truth? What was it really like behind the scenes working with, you know, the APA and Undertaker and Kane during that invasion storyline? That's, that's the truth. They were not welcoming in the beginning. Eventually, I developed a good working friendship with all those guys. But in the beginning, uh, John uh, in particular, and probably, you know, probably the most, he wasn't welcoming. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. Like these guys were, you know, yes, there was, they, they felt there was a, we were a threat. But God, if they saw the big picture, this was the most real time in the business. Take advantage of it, befriend us, vice versa, and let's make money. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of talent, you can do a lot of things, but. In the beginning, yeah, and I'm sure they'll tell you the same thing. You know, they, in a way, maybe they want us to pay our dues coming over there. I get it. Um, but were they welcoming in the beginning? No way. Ron, what? you know, it's funny. Ron said just a, just a yeah. Ron Simmons, always a sweetheart. From day one with Ron, <laughs> he was fine. <laughs> he seems that way. He just seems like he Good. would be the nicest guy. Good man. Um, so, I mean, I know that probably that invasion storyline was not like the most, you know, the, your favorite part of your career, but what was, do you have a favorite part of those few months? You know, because it's, it's such a random time in wrestling. Is it a favorite moment from that summer that you, you know, rem- remember? Uh, you know, in, in, in particular, there's nothing that stands out in my mind. Um, it was an uneasy time. It was an uneasy time because we were trying to, you know, find a spot there. I mean, we mm-hmm. never knew week to week what was going to happen. So, and I don't think they knew what they were doing as far as the shot callers. I don't think they really knew how, how, how to do this. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, I, I'm not knocking them because they're at a different, uh, you know, pay grade than me. But again, being such a real time in the industry, it could have been capitalized on a little better, I think. I, I referred to, I, I did an interview recently, the Scott Hall, when Scott Hall came over to WCW, that was real. Mm-hmm. And it worked. It ignited such a fantastic run in the business. I thought that could have been recreated again. Uh, well, you know, you, you ended up going, uh, you, you ended up off TV for a little while. I mean, you came back, it was Billy and Chuck. And um, yeah. it's, it's funny because if you ever go back on the network and you, go to watch an episode of SmackDown from 2001, the first thing that pops up is like the last SmackDown of December and it's Stacey Keebler looking at you and Billy, you know, doing the pose. Um, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, but that was, I mean, that was in a lot of ways really revolutionary because you guys were over as Rover. You yeah. were also having like, you know, the kind of LGBT community who didn't have a lot of representation who felt like they had some yeah. with Billy and Chuck. And, you know, that wasn't a time when that happened a lot. So, what, what are your memories of kind of coming up with that uh, team and, you know, kind of doing it on TV? Fantastic time. A lot of fun. Obviously, I'm working with Billy Gunn. Very talented guy. Taught me a lot. Um, the whole idea behind the character, I don't know if this started from day one, but once the characters were developed, I knew they were going to use us for cable television network ratings week. That last night where we had the actual... Uh, ceremony mm-hmm. so we had to peek out there I, I got that um they disbanded it shortly after it, it could have continued on it was over um cutting edge right at the time very cutting edge like you said the um this all this gender topic talk now it's right there in pop culture and 
that community has made such advances, right, in society. Mm-hmm. Happy for them. Um, at the time, not talked about often. Think about it. 2002, same-sex marriage, right? So it, it was great in so many ways, and we had a lot of fun doing it. The thing was, we never took it personal. These were characters, and we played the parts to the best yep. of our ability, and we ended up having fun doing it. We mm-hmm. would try to make each other laugh every night. <laughs> you know, I laughed. I smiled more while I played that character than probably any other character I ever played. Um, great time. You, know, you mentioned that you mentioned there that kind of once you guys did the big ceremony and Eric Bischoff is the the minister. You know, shortly after there was a disp- it disbanded. Do you feel like it should have gone in any in any other direction? Because it kind of felt like once you guys had kind of went, well, we're not then they didn't really know where they were going to go with it. Do you, I mean, was it just too soon in sort of pop culture to go that direction? Or how do you feel about it looking back? I think that character could have continued to develop um, in either direction, whether we continued with the same sex thing or we just became bros, you know, for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. uh, term because we were having fun out there and I, when you're having fun, people see that and they have fun. So I think we would have continued to feed each other off each other, no matter what direction we went. Um, why they stopped it so quick. There was a couple things going on at the time. Number one, we had peaked out on ratings week, accomplished the goal. Number two, um, in Canada, I can't remember where we were, but Billy Gunn suffered a pretty uh, traumatic shoulder injury. So he was kind of done for a while. I don't know the details, but I also think he was, there was something to do with some contract negotiations he was trying to work out. Not sure. You have to ask him about that, but um, yeah. So they disbanded it. Um, it's unfortunate, but um, that's the way this business is. You know, you never know why you never really know why. So Chuck, you know, you've got a YouTube channel, right? Tell people about what it is, what's going on, how people can find it. Yeah. So on YouTube, it's called Chuck of all trades. And basically I'm just showing the world, what I do on a daily basis, working with my hands, whether it's houses, motorcycles, cars, building buildings, we get, we roll our sleeves up and we get dirty and we, we do the stuff ourselves. So uh, yeah, Chuck of all trades. We got a lot of good things coming. We're going to start a new car show in this building that we just built. Uh, and then my only other social media is um, Instagram and it's Chuck Colombo. So please friend me and, you know, please subscribe on social media too. It's free and it helps us tremendously, but Instagram, Chuck Colombo, Chuck of all trades on YouTube. And um, yeah, I hope you like it. There you go. And we've got all the links below here on YouTube. Check out the, the links below. You can catch up with Chuck and see what he's up to. Chuck, I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure speaking with you.